This week's Torah portion is Kitavo. And again, it's Moses speaking to the people before they're about to enter into the land of Israel. They've sojourned through the desert, they're about to come in. And Moses is telling them, when you go into the land, one of the things you have to do is you have to, when you plant your seeds and you grow your produce, there are seven species that are indigenous to the land of Israel. Those are the dates and the pomegranates and the grapes and the the dates, the pomegranates, the grapes, the wheat, the olives, the barley. And when those grow and you see them budding, then you're going to you're going to you're going to put a little tie around them and you're going to earmark them. Those are your first fruits and you're going to bring them to the temple and there's going to be great joy and you're going to sing and you'll dance and you bring your first produce to the temple in Jerusalem and you give them to the priest. And there's an idea that even before you know what your crop's going to be and your crop could be a dud that year. It doesn't matter because the first fruits are not yours. You're going to give them, you're going to demonstrate your humility, you're going to demonstrate your gratitude by by bringing them to Jerusalem and celebrating the first fruits. So there's a celebration of, of the miracle of nature, of the miracle of producing fruits of food that we can grow, that we know that it's coming from God. And then when he brings it to the temple, then he has to declare a whole history of the Jewish people, that there was a wandering Aramean, that, that Lavan wanted to kill Jacob, and Jacob comes down to Egypt, and there's the whole enslavement in Egypt, which we all know about, because we read about it in the Haggadah on, on Pesach, on Seder night, and that the whole Jewish history of coming through the slavery and coming out, God brought us out with an outstretched arm, and he brought us into the desert, and God took care of us in the desert, and then he brought us into the land. So when we're bringing, and then we bring this first fruit, but the first fruit isn't a first fruit just because it's a first fruit and it's a miracle of nature, which it is, but also because it's predicated on the whole history and God's involvement in that whole history to bring us to that day. A very good friend of mine, son, got married in Israel today and he's an American boy. He married a girl who was born in Israel. I believe she was born in Israel. I'm not exactly sure. But the point is that, <clears throat> the, that, that my friend is from England and her husband's from America and the bride, the Kala, her parents, I think, are from South Africa and Israel. So we have Israel and South Africa and England and America and these two kids standing under the chuppah in Israel. And, it's, and the rabbi, Rabbi Manning, spoke to them today and he said, it's not just that you're here today, which you are, which is amazing, which is fantastic, and we're celebrating you and your newness of being married but we're also celebrating and and giving thanks to God that you came to this moment with all of the Jewish history all the Jewish history that came before you your families and the Jewish people and how it was that you came out from um, from from Europe perhaps or or how it is that you ended up here today there's an involvement of God in the history and in our identity there's no accident that this that this couple have come to be this couple under this chuppah today and it's predicated on where we've come from and I think that's a very powerful lesson of understanding there's a miracle in the moment of the produce but there's also the miracle of the history that predates that and how we got to be where we are today who are we how we get to be where we are and perhaps that's part of the interest that there is now in our history who are we and the Jewish people are amazing at that we recall our history all the time every day we remember Egypt coming out from Egypt that God brought us out with an outstretched arm and gave us this land and, and we built the temple and, and so on and so on. We, we recall all of our Jewish holidays pretty much are about recalling our Jewish history and understanding God's role in bringing us and, and keeping us alive as a Jewish people. And that's what the farmer did when he brought his produce to Jerusalem and with singing and with dancing was great joy. It says in the Mishnah, it says in the Pekah of us in the ethics of our father, who is rich, he who is happy with his lot. And we speak over and over again in this week's Torah portion about joy, that we have to we have to celebrate our gratitude, that all the things we have. There's an amazing story about Rav Susha. Rav Susha is a very poor rabbi and he apparently had nothing. I can't remember all the details, but he was living in a hovel and he had nothing. And he what did he have? He had whatever he needed, he had. And uh, somebody was suffering, didn't know how to cope with their suffering. They went to their local Rav and said, how do I deal with my suffering? And the man was advised to go visit Rav Susha. So he goes to Rav Susha and knocks on the door. It's a, it's a wind coming through and it's cold and he's sitting there and he's got boils on his skin. I mean, it's an awful story. Whatever the details, I don't remember exactly. But the point is that the man says to Rav Susha, tell me about suffering. Tell me how to endure, how to how to deal with it. And, the, and Rav Susha says, why are you asking me? I have everything I need. I'm happy. 
So it's a story that speaks about what, how we see our lives, how we see what we have. Are we happy with our lives? Are we happy with what we have? Can we look through those glasses of gratitude and recognizing those things? And we're called Jews. We're called the Yehudim, named after Yehuda, which means to give thanks. So here we are, the Bikurim. And it says that one of the foundations of the world is gratitude. That Bikurim that represents the gratitudes is one of the reasons why the world was created because of this character trait of gratitude of thankfulness and when we brought when the farmer brought his first produce to the temple and he declared this whole Jewish history then he would bow he would prostrate himself and there's a humility there there's a recognition of the good I am so grateful that I'm bowing bowing down to God and saying I am so grateful for everything I'm nothing I have this amazing gift that you have given me of this first fruit that I come to the temple that I have closeness to God is where this joy is coming from and uh, I think we can we can relate to that when we're doing something we believe is meaningful when we do something that we, we, we brings us closer to God we feel joy in that in that in that experience that's really really amazing simcha true existential joy so we talked about beginnings. There's the beginning of the Bikurim, the first fruit. And there's the beginning of the morning when we wake up and we say, Mo de Ani, thank you, I, thank you God for my life. Thank you with the first thing we do when we wake up, the beginning of our day, excited to thank God for our day. When we bow through the uh, silent prayer, we say three times a day, there's a modim prayer, a prayer of gratitude for our lives, for everything we have. Again, gratitude and humility, recognizing the good, recognizing God's role in everything that is around us, everything we have, that everything there's ain odd milvada, there's nothing but God. And then there's an idea, obviously we're coming towards Rosh Hashanah and Rosh Hashanah is the beginning of the year. So again, it's the beginning and there's a mystical teaching that says everything goes after the beginning. If we lay down the foundations in the beginning, it's going to be good from then on. The foundation of the world is gratitude. If we have gratitude, we build on that, it's going to be good. If we, when we come to Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah is the day that Adam, the first man, was created. That's the beginning. And in that beginning is absolute potential. And in our beginning of Rosh Hashanah, when we begin anew, renew, we start all over again. And the idea of Teshuvah, repentance, is really not translated that way. It's really, Teshuvah doesn't mean repentance. It means returning, returning to our true essence. And we believe that we're inherently existentially good, that we have a soul that God breathes into us, that, it's a, that we are inherently connected to God and that we're inherently good. And so we can want to start our year with that understanding, with that belief that we can do good and are good and again we want to be godlike when God is giving he's giving us the first fruits he's giving us the land he's giving us so many things in this week's Torah portion we read about what God gives us then we also want to be givers so we have to be we have to be full our cup has to be full in order to be unconditionally giving and that's part of the work of this season is to understand what we have is what we need and to connect ourselves to God and be grat grateful for that and to have humility for that and to bow in, in, in that in, uh, in physical understanding that we are grateful and humble in everything that we have and everything that we are grateful for. So, um, so that, that, those are some of the ideas I want to bring. And when the Jewish people came into the land of Israel, they were told you have to write the Torah on stone on something solid, like we write it on parchment, which which is organic and which we have to renew every now and then where the letters get smudged or whatever. But when the Jewish people went into the land of Israel, they had to write it on, on, on stone, something, something um, that was um, not going to uh, fly away in the wind. It's very solid. It's very, it's very uh, permanent. And, uh, and as an idea of that, the permanency of the Torah, the permanency of the Jewish people. So when we talk about beginnings, we talk about the first fruits and how the farmer had to bring his first fruits. He didn't know what his crop was going to be. He had to bring that first fruit with joy, with great understanding that, he's, um, that everything he has comes from God and he's going to come to the temple and he's going to sing and dance and bring it and share it with the, give it, to the, give it up to the temple and bow down and ask God to bless us. 
ask God to bless us and and in that blessing we get to bless others when we feel full when we feel abundant and we can give to others that that's a very um, good place to be and it's a very amazing place to be as we start the new year Rosh Hashanah is coming up that we can go back into who we are understanding that we have a soul that is God breathing his, his essence into us that that's something that we have that's really good and that we can access that and find that and return to that and start again that that's a very amazing good foundational work to do at the beginning of the new year so I bless us that we use the time to, well that we um, look through uh, grateful eyes at the world around us and as much as there's suffering and as much as there's pain and as much as there is all of that God's involved in that too and we don't see the good in our day and age but we have hope and we have faith and we have trust that at the end of the day, just like when the farmer is bringing his first fruit, just like when this couple is standing under the chuppah, all of Jewish history, all of Jewish history brought brought the farmer, brought this couple to this moment. And in that moment, they're grateful and they're happy for who they are and what they have. And we sh and I please God, we should feel the same way.